Hi viewers, yes, I'm back at it again. Gooseberries. We are not done with Raila Minus gooseberries. There's more in our part two video. Want to know more about how she practically makes the jam, juice, wine, and sources from this wonderful wild fruit? Or are you interested in the market for gooseberries and much more? We have it here for you. If you haven't watched our part one of the video, click the link below and please subscribe to our channel. Tafadali. Welcome to Gooseberry Delight. This is where we first uh, receive the fruits from the farmers. It arrives here, uh, where we now start doing the, the sorting. Once it arrives, we, we weigh and get the exact kilos of what the farmer has brought. Once it is uh, captured into the books, it's now transferred to the sorting tables. Now this is where we have a number of uh, casuals who come to sort the berries. Uh, depending with the order of the clans, some clans just want to buy it with the husks. This one has a better shelf life. Then we have grade A. Grade A, these are the quality fruits that are now have been husked. These ones are packed into panets and distributed to clients. We have others that are excessively overripe. The overripes are the ones that we use now for processing of our products. Uh, immediately after that, uh, the, all the sorters are now uh, paid according to what they sorted. How many kilos do you process in a day? In a day when you're at capacity, we can do between uh, 300 to 500. It all depends on the orders as well. But mm -hmm. of late, the, the, there has been an increasing uh, demand for the fruits. Mm -hmm. We are almost like triple what we used to produce last year. Currently, we are averaging about two tons mm -hmm. per week. We have about 45 farmers we are working with, and we have an acreage of about 50 acres currently under gooseberry. We work jointly with uh, small-scale farmers. We support them by providing them with quality seedlings, which they buy from us. All the farmers are within Osingishu County. We are also looking at expanding to other counties because we also realize there's a problem in terms of uh, seasonality. When Osingishu is on season, other areas seem to be off season. When we are off season currently like as we are off season a little bit, you realize other areas like Old Kalau are on, on season. So we are looking at how to partner with those farmers and we've already started uh, the process of how to engage them and how we'll be working. Currently we pay farmers 80 shillings a kilo for the quality. And the overripe? The overripe we pay 50 shillings. Okay. Yes. What quantities per acre farmers get? It all depends on how they take care of it. You see an average of about 500 kilos per week on averagely about an acre. But we've seen cases where farmers are bringing even up to 800 per week. Others are even bringing as low as 100. If you want a good yield, then you ought to be harvesting on a daily basis. If you harvest late, you'll harvest less. But if you more or less harvest regularly, you'll harvest more. Don't wait until it's overripe. There's a certain stage that we look at, and that's where we encourage farmers to harvest at that particular stage. Mm -hmm. And then they are required to actually sort at the farm level before they bring it here, so that we have less wastages mm -hmm. as well from our side and from their side. Mm -hmm. This is where now packaging is done. Mm -hmm. Fresh is put into panets. This is the panets that has 250 grams. These are now dried fruits. Ooh. So they overripe when we don't, when we have excess of overripe, we dry them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Are they then, delicious really? They are very delicious. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> it, is, it is nice and chewy, mm, chewy. right? Mm. This is where they do the labeling, then they do the batching and give it a cord, then they shrink wrap it according to, uh -huh. to the sizes. Mm. So every batch has its own special cord. This is how cords are now added. Then once that is done, yeah, you press it up now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's... Wow. Goose, gooseberry, fruit juice. Yes. But yeah, we are also in the process of experimenting wine making. Pachin, sobo, sobo, yes, wine. Yes, wine, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, why the wine? Because we have a lot of uh, fruit that are cracked. It's classified as waste, but for us now we want to turn it into gold, mm -hmm. into a wine. The good thing about wines is uh, it can stay many years. Mm -hmm. And the longer it stays, the better it becomes. So okay. the longer it stays, the clearer it becomes. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. So is it going to become a very clear wine? Yeah, it becomes uh -huh. clearer. This one is how old? It's older than this by maybe a difference of uh, two months. You mm -hmm. can have wine even within 
three months. Mm -hmm. It all depends with the yeasts and the activations that you are using. This is dry wine, right? We are trying to do a, a wine that has sweet and mm -hmm. semi-sweet. Mm -hmm. So these are just still on R&D. At every stage, we keep checking what is happening. And uh, we are able to finally get the final uh, product and then we now be able to take it to kids for certifications. During this experimentation, mm -hmm. who is giving you like assistance and that kind of thing? We work with the University of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. We also work with a food scientist who is specialized in, uh, in uh, wine making. And uh, we also have students from Egerton University. What do you do with any risks? Mm -hmm. Valley vocational training. They have uh, selected a team of students who will be able to develop products with the wastages that we are generating. But for us, it can still be used for sources. Yeah, we can ferment it and use it for sources. Mm -hmm. We also do a lot of R&Ds. Mm -hmm. We also doing with the pulp. Once you have removed the pulp, mm -hmm. you've separated the, the seeds. Mm -hmm. You remain with the pulp, use that to make juice. What happens to that pulp? So we, we try some things. Put leather. We are running a lot of R&Ds. We are also trying to see whether it can become harder so that we can be able to grind it into powder. Mm -hmm. So we run a lot of R&Ds. We have roughly about 500 panels per day. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it goes to even 800 mm -hmm. panels per day. So okay. it all depends with the orders. Mm -hmm. And yeah. what about? The sources, it depends also with the orders. Mm -hmm. About 500 pieces. Per month? Per month. Okay. Yeah. But it's now going to increase now that we've entered neighbors. Gooseberry is a wild fruit that uh, had no value. The challenge was people could not get it readily available in the supermarkets. Mm -hmm. And supermarkets also were not able to actually stock this fruit because there was no enough supply to actually distribute countrywide mm -hmm. their stores. We took the initiative to now increase production. We work directly with farmers who are able to produce and then we are able to buy from them and then we pack. Now we have capacity to distribute countrywide through neighbors, supermarket. We're also working with other fruit distributors. Mm -hmm. We're also working with some industries that are also buying it in bank to actually make jam for export. There's also a client who has reached out for export. He wants minimum of 288 boxes of fresh with the husks going to the Asian market. So it's a, it's a new market that we're going to explore. And uh, the demand is high in Asia because they normally get from Colombia, but Kenya is nearer to Asia. That's why he feels like there's a lot of potential for us Kenyans and African countries to actually distribute this fruit to, to Asian market. The demand in the market is growing, especially because it is a, it's considered like a, a functional food. These are products that already are very high in nutrition. They have a lot of health benefits that go beyond the nutrition. People are beginning to use these kind of products as an ingredient. That's why the demand is really growing. And as you know, consumers are becoming health conscious. They want something that is plant-based, that is healthy, that has health benefits. Can you tell us about the nutrition value? The gooseberry is very rich in uh, vitamin A, and it's also very high also in vitamin C. And uh, it's also rich in antioxidant. And you know, antioxidant is something that helps your body minimize cases of cancer, high blood pressure. People who are also looking at losing weight, it's also a very good uh, product that they can use. We also notice that people who are diabetic, they take the gooseberry, the sugars don't shoot. Mm. Because the sugar levels in this is very low. In terms of fiber, it's very important. Most of the foods that we are eating are processed foods that have no nutrition and have no fibers. So using this makes your digestion better and it also helps you to improve your health benefits and get the nutrition that your body needs. It is a berry that people are setting an eye on. It's more affordable when you compare to strawberries. It can easily grow without the aspect of using chemicals. The other categories is like a, a climate smart crop because it doesn't consume in a lot of water. And then the interesting bit is that when everything is dry, it's the only thing that is green. So it's a very good crop that can be used also for rotating because it doesn't require use of DAPs and all sorts of fertilizers. We just use organic manure, which we train farmers how to compost that manure. And we also encourage them to return back what they have uh, harvested that is not of good quality. They compost it and then take it back to the soils. Your fruits are basically organic? Yes, 100% organic.